basically data structure means the data how we are placing basically whenever you are working uh, the simple analogy is like say if you want water water means you will drink the water right for drinking you take a glass but if the same water is needed for bathing or washing the cloths you need a bucket but if the same water is needed for irrigating a farm so you need a you know water tanker or like something big so means for different purposes the same water so we are taking in different containers right these data structures are those containers in fact there were like many data structures to be frank but like uh, every language comes with some uh, built in data structures like that python comes with these four data structures called as a list tuple set and dictionary means at the core they also will have the basic data only like you know into so what are the basic data types till now we, what we know basic data types means int float none so we have seen the none boolean which is like a true or a false so or like false which is a boolean or like uh, so these are the basic data types you have seen even if you go for these data structures also we store the same things only but how we are storing based upon that each one has its own advantages so what is that advantages all those things we will see right now so first going ahead with the data uh, st uh, structures is called as collections you know these list tuple set and dictionary we call them as collections the reason why we are calling it collections i will tell you shortly because they are collectively storing the values that's why they are also called as collections these are the built in data structures so let's uh, if i say 0 1 list so whenever you create it with single folder so vs code will show you like this but if you have like multiple folders it will show better so tuple so if i have like the next one is set 0 3 sets and the fourth one we have is dictionaries dicks we call what are this each one how they are working let's see first if i want to work on the list so i p y n b if i create i'm creating a jupyter notebook the moment you create a jupyter notebook first we need to you know create give the kernel once it is done we can start working so what is a list how it can help us first and foremost as i told you till now list coming to the case of a list as i told you list is a data structure see every data structure has some kind of rules and regulations so when you are working so the first and foremost if i see list is represented using braces means if you create any value till now so value is equal to say 1 and if i ask to print you know type of value comma value it is saying what so like this so we have seen so integers and at the same time if you place some bra some value decimal it will come like this now for the first time we are storing the same value which are maybe integer or float but within the as uh, you know these braces if it is square braces the moment you give it becomes a list this is what you need to be understanding it can have single value or more number of values but it will work like this we can also create like a empty also in fact if i create like a empty list see empty list is equal to just braces apart from type and the value this time i'm asking the length also so length is a built in function which can be applied only on the iterable objects i told we couldn't apply length on an ordinary int or a float or anything till now we have applied only on strings because we can for loop on strings in the same fashion for list also we can apply means we can loop over this also see basically list is 
stored in the square braces. We can have single value or we don't have any a value also. Or you can have multiple values. So now going for a, another option here. I'm taking all integers. Whether it can be positive or negative, I have taken. But you can see it is a homogeneous list. Homogeneous means all were of same kind. All were integers, right? That's the reason in the output also we can see the same lines. In the same fashion, the beauty of list is that we can store any data type within it. The reason why they are called as collections means they can collectively store any other things. You see, I have an integer, I have a float, I have a negative float, so very long number and then a string, so boolean, some expression, some string. Means these many data types I have. So what would be the result type? So overall it is called as a list. But individually if you ask, each one will have its their own types. Means the beauty is that it can store, you know, so that's what I'm trying to say. It is stored using the braces. We can have like different kinds of data types together. It can be like singular multiple dimensions. It can also store asymmetric data types, means any number of different data types we can place together. Now the last point about, we can also store the values of different dimensions. Means, so in the first two cases, what you have seen, we have all values of same type, all values of different type but everything in a single place. At the same time, you can go for a multi-dimensional. Means, I have all the elements like this, and within this I have one more list, and within this I have one more thing called a tuple. Means if you store the same elements within a parenthesis, it's called as a tuple, as highlighted. We will see about tuples also next. But you can understand that, at the outset, if you see, these elements are like this. At the first level, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and this entire list is a single value. That's what happens, right? So if I go inner dimensions, means within this, again, subdivisions, means within this, again, like 0, 1, 2, 3, and again, this entirety is like a single value. So individually, within this also, if you want to go, we can go like this, 0 and 1. Means if you ref want to refer this 9, so first, at the first dimension, I need to say 5. Within that, I want to go to 3. Within that, I want to go to 0. So I'm giving like three indices, right? That's what is called as a three-dimensional list. So multi-dimensional. Till now, we never encountered this kind of uh, thing because in a string, we can index. But string will not have a substring, so like, like a different dimensions, right? The moment you came to list, for the first time you're seeing the same thing you will see afterwards also. But like first and foremost, if the scenario is like this, a list is defined, then how to get the values? Typically, if you ask till now how we would work, if I ask the type and so and so, it says list only, and the values means entirety it will give. And what if I give length? Will it say that three elements are there, two elements are there, or five elements are there, or total number of elements? At the base level, how many elements are there? It will give that number. Yeah. At the base level, we have five elements. So zero to five. So that's why it will give six. At the base level, this entirety is treated as single element, right? So that's why it says six elements. As indexing starts from zero, we get like that. And similarly, if I go for like, you know, hey, give me the third value or give me the fourth value or specifically, how we do indexing on a typical string, the same rules works here also, indexing, slicing. If I ask, hey, give me the third value, it will give 4.3. If I give, ask the fourth value, it will give so and so. But every time when you're doing index, so don't forget this, that indexing starts from zero. So if you see here, so each element, if you can observe carefully, the overall list, is like a of type list, but individual elements are retaining their own type. If I ask a type of the ML of three, means, hey, get me the data type of the third element. The third element is like 4.3, it's of type float. That's why I got float. So the data type of fourth element, which is a five, which is an integer. So that's why I got an integer. 
So like that we get it. In the same fashion, what if happen if I ask for the value of uh, type of six, sorry, ML of six, we have values from zero through five. Even in a, in a string also the same thing happens, right? If you ask beyond the limits, it will throw an error. The same thing works here also. If you ask beyond limits, it will throw an error. So, and if you go further in deep, so you can find that. So individually, hey, if you want to go for the second value, third value, fourth value, like with deep within it. You see in this value, I'm saying like four of three of one. As I told you in this case, so, sorry, uh, five of three of one. So I mean, see here, first it will go to the fifth element. Within that, it will go to the third element. Within that, it will go to the first element. So like that, we get the three, sorry, 10. To get 10, we have like used three dimensions. That's the reason it is called as a three-dimensional list. So uh, just do one thing like 3D means it should be, you know, graphically something. But this is how it works, three-dimensional means. So this is a point about it. And similarly, what are the rules that you are working, you know, uh, forward direction or like reverse direction indexing? The same rules of the list works, uh, string works in the list also. So what are the elements we have? Till now we know what? Indexing we can be doing in the forward indexing means what? From zero onwards the value will start. Whereas the reverse indexing means indexing starts from minus one, right? So when you start with from minus one, the last value will be minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, like that. The same rules apply here also. Means if you take the last value, which is minus one, you see minus one, minus two, like that. Earlier, how we did with the forward indexing. So now I am repeating the same with the reverse indexing. If I want to go to it, so within that again, reverse indexing, within that again, reverse indexing. And observe one thing, there is, to be frank, there is nothing like reverse indexing in the real world. So no other language even supports this concept of reverse indexing. But Python helps us actually. Whenever you're working with large elements, it would be easy. So to make us comfortable, they give like that. And anyhow, I need not repeat again, right? We have already seen a lot. And also, uh, I showed you already. If I give an assert statement, if it is wrong, it will throw an error. If you do in a forward index or reverse index, if you are referring to the same element, both will be same. When you're doing a forward indexing, the last element will be the indexing of five in forward indexing. But in a reverse indexing, the first element is, is last element is minus one. So, but like, like then things will go. So if I go for minus five or like one, both are same. Similarly here, so five or minus one. So that is also same like that. And the same rules works even for slicing also. So to avoid repeating, I'm not telling again, but slicing means what? From the first index till the last index, it will go, but doesn't include the last value. If you want, like you can bring this index again to help you to understand. So if you take this uh, list, you will understand. So if you see here, so fine, right? So generally for the list of values, I think like I need to copy the entire thing, right? Yeah, this values. You take, you will understand. If I give like a one more index, you can see this. You see, if you are asking like one to four, so from first position, first position is this, from first position till the fourth position, but doesn't include the fourth position, right? So you should get only three values. So if I ask for that, you will notice the same. So I got three values, right? In the same lines, if I go for the next one, so one to four with a step of two, you know how these things works. So every value, every second value, every third value, I told the same concept of slicing works here also. So you give the starting index or final index, step is by default positive plus one. Or if you give any specifically explicitly something, that also works. Fine. So with this, we understood the very basics and we made a comparison with compared to the previous one. Next. Coming to the concept of immutability. Mutability. 
of list means list is mutable object that's what i want to say hope you remember when i worked with strings i told you that strings are immutable whereas this is mutable so mutable or immutable means what any object that supports in place changes so objects that support in place changes so in place changes means address location should not change but the value should change so to understand this concept let me give one example if i take a number number 1 is equal to 1 2 3 4 so if i ask hey what is the value uh, data type uh, and like id it will give some address location i have taken some address location let me take it now for the same number i am trying to uh, change the value how to change the value of an integer we try to overwrite right like this so like that we try to overwrite so you now i am trying to overwrite it so from 1 2 3 4 i am changing to 9999 9. now when you did like this did you see that the value is changed but at the same time the address location is also changed so this is called as overwriting it is called as overwriting means you are like overwriting on existing value so address location is also changing so whereas let me take one more example in terms of like the strings if i go for the concept of strings i took a name called as rajshekar so i am asking the name and i am asking the first 0 to 3 means 0 1 2 it will go till the third value but doesn't include the third character 0th character first character second character so you get like raj so in this raj shaker i want to change the uh, raj to tej so means like i am doing like this i am taking 0th rc same thing we know and i am modifying it so but it will not allow it what is saying the string doesn't support item assignment so means in place changes can't be done to understand more you know strings are immutable that's the reason in place it's not supporting whereas we can do like you know for the same name so can i change like you know so name is equal to instead of raj i will do like you know so tej so and like you know tej shaker i can do i can do like this right so before doing this i will ask hey what is the existing address location and after changing what is the address location anyhow the name will not change but first and foremost i want to check with that if you can observe that you will understand the moment we are overwriting the address location is changing and if i ask the name the name is changed to tej shaker but it's a new object location the existing object it is not changing right that's the main point so let me take the previous list that we have worked just now which is a multi dimensional list right so in this list i want to take some values and i want to modify them so how things are working here i want to just show you i am saying that a list is a mutable object means it supports in place changes means let's do one thing so after having this value first i will print what is the list and a type means data type and address location it will give the address location and after that i will take hey what is the value of a particular location so first i have taken i got some address location let me copy this address location fine because the address location every time changes fine i want to take say a third element what is the third element 4.3 right 4.3 which is a floating point value but i want to change that floating point value to something else so now i am changing that 4.4.3 to 3.4 within the same uh, data type i am trying to change can i change first of all if it changes to within the same address location if it is there or not that also we should see did you observe that the address location is same so means address location didn't change but the value changed now if you see the overall list the entire values will be the same except this third value this is what is expected right we can change a single value not only that 
we can take a slice say one to some four if i take one to four means i got three values these three values i want to change why every time changing so uh, there is one more option also we can take a slice of it and uh, say like i want to mark it as two 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 after doing also again i will ask hey what is the uh, tape so total values and what is the address location now you see i changed what are the values i took the values were changed and did you see that address location is not changed again the same address location is retained so this is what i want to tell you so python supports so this kind of changes hope this is what you are expecting right so this is the concept of mutability so list supports this concept of mutability next so going for the next one so there is one more option called as like you know uh, for you <laughs> list attributes we have seen the basic functionalities if i go ahead there is something called as list attributes how we have seen the string attributes in the same fashion here also we can see if i create a small uh, say a small string called as numbers equal to so and so as i have a value stored within a square brace it's a list if i ask the type it will give the data type and you know dar is a built in function to get the list of attributes for any object based upon the type this dar will give the values as it is a list so we will get the list type attributes and if you can observe if i ignore the things which are underscores on either side also there are quite number of good number of things will be there these are all the things which we need to work on how to work so before even working so i will tell you why we don't work with the things which are underscores on either side let me take a couple of them and i let me help you if you want to get the length of any uh, thing so at this context we are in a list length means what total number of values that's what you want right total count of values at the base dimension so if you want to get the count there is a built in function called as length which i told either you can use the length built in function or attribute underscore underscore length in fact i gave a assertion means if the the statement after the assert if it is wrong it will throw an error if i am doing like this means i am confident that both are equal so if you want to calculate the length either we can go in either with the length built in function or length attribute in the same line if you want to convert to a string you know str is a built in function we use for like converting to a string in the same fashion for the numbers we have underscore underscore str underscore underscore so it means like everything we have like this if i do in both the key things it is treated like a string only either i can go like this or like that so both will retain the same object and did you see we are getting a quotes also just to help you understand it's a string both were doing the same job in the same fashion there is one more thing called as list repetition operation list repetition means like a string repetition as we have a list uh, list right now which is the numbers and if you want to get the uh, the same thing multiple times we can multiply with a 3 so we can get like this so if i multiply by 3 i get like number into 3 the same thing did you see it is repeating three times because i have given like that in the same fashion if you want to do the same thing in the other way also we can do numbers into 3 so either you go like this or like that both are equal so i can write like assert numbers into 3 is equal to numbers into so and so so both will give the same result i give one more s okay it is working perfectly and this will not change the original object if i see after this if i ask it will be the same again 
the original object is not changing. But at the same time, if you want the original object to be changed, there is one more thing called as IML. IML means like, you know, plus equal. To. So it is like indirectly like, you know, numbers is it multiply equal to so three. Instead of three, e multiply equal to three. So like that, this IML is there. If I do, what are the changes were happening? Will happen on the same object. So that's the reason after that, if you ask, hey, what is the values? It will be like this. And you know this concept. In the same fashion, there is one more operation called as a list concatenation operation. Means if you give two lists, it will do that operation and help you understand. So till now we have numbers, which is one list. And if I ask, it will tell. Similarly, I have alphabets. This is another list. If I have these two lists, I can get the summation. So if I want, I can do addition of these two lists. You can get, you know, so the second list came at the end. Similarly, I can also do alphabets. So plus numbers. If both are of same type, then it will work perfectly. Oh shit, I did a mistake. Alphabets equal to I did. So I should repeat again. So if I do again, so alphabets plus if I do, now you can see B, C and so and so. So like this, it works. You see here. So addition, this is called as a concatenation because we are concatenating two things. And by the way, the content came, we can do like number plus plus means two lists we can add. So, and you know, this both are not equal means if you come add, you know, number one plus number two, so means like two lists. So the reverse of it, if you add also, both are not equal. So which is like a, not a commutative property, right? So addition is not commutative. So that's what I want to say. And in the same fashion, if you want to do the same addition, alternately, we can also do with there is one more thing called as everything dot underscore underscore add underscore underscore of the second one. If I do like this, any operation I can do means add of the second element. Alphabet. If I execute, I get it. In the same fashion, the other way. So in, in fact, so I want to give a clear picture that assert, if I do numbers plus alphabets, which is another list, we same like, you know, doing like this. In the same fashion, if I do the things in the other way, means first if I place alphabets, so whichever you want to make it first. So that you, for that you give this addition operation attribute. And fathers you do. And by the way, after doing both also, the original objects will not change. At the same time, if you want the original changes to be reflected, so then we need to go for the I add. So numbers dot underscore underscore I add. So wherever like, you know, I is there. These are all I operations. I add, I mul. At this moment, you have only two. But in future, in other more things also, you see, if I say like I add, what are the changes were done will re, uh, reflect on the original object. So if I do like this, it is same like, you know, uh, numbers, so plus equal to alphabets. This is same like this. And after doing this thing, operation, so you are asking, Okay, underscore, underscore. I forgot the remaining underscore. And the beauty is that the changes were reflected on the original object. That's the reason after you this operation, if you are asking, the original object is also having B and C in the last. So that is what we should be aware of. So the difference between I add and add. So like the different attributes are there. So now we understood. And the last one, which I want to tell you is about the membership check. 
whenever you are going for a iterable when you have more elements this is the most common thing so if you want to check value is equal to something or not so membership tick is the most important thing so the membership tick can be done with a numbers dot underscore underscore contains or like like this both will result in the same answer you know in this example is 22 sorry is 12 there in this outputs anywhere no we don't have so that's why it would be false in both the cases in the same fashion can i check for the value of uh, presence of say b is b present yes so let me try that so if you want to check numbers dot contains of b so it's a string that we want to check i give it as it is present in both the results it will be true so a presence or absence of anything we can take with this membership check and also one more thing i want to bring to your notice is about the memory so memory allocations basically this is one thing you should be aware of whenever you want to check the memory size of any of the list not only list down the line you will learn other data structures as these are not basic data types so for all these data structures it will be slightly different there is a module called as sys module also with that also we can do or the other way also we can for every object no one words like list tuple set dictionary for everything there is a size of operator the size of operator will give you the bytes how much python it occupied whereas sys dot get size of numbers means for the same list if you do sys dot get size of it will also give the existing size plus c header why this concept of c header means you need to understand now python is a interpreter based language means it will not execute directly on the machine first it will convert to the base language mostly it is a python a c language that's why it is called a c python so 80 to 90 percent of the people go with c python only there are some people who go with like the base version is like java called as jaitha so and some people will go with the base version of dotnet mostly you see like c python only so that's the reason it will also add the buffer so i have given like this now so numbers dot size of this one similarly like this now assignment for you is repeat the same for all basic data types and data structures data structures like list tuple set and dict of course next you will learn shortly you can do it so try to do this assignment then you will understand for basic data types both will be same but for this data structures so th this will have an extra size you see for this list it took like extra tw uh, 20 bytes right extra for the conversions and similarly if you want to get the documentation there are two ways again if you want to get the documentation so either we can go for like uh, numbers which are that object is from now any object you go underscore underscore docs if you write for any object it will give the documentation it will be so weird we need to use a print statement so to better print it if i use it you can see the content it's a built-in mutable sequence so and what is the basic documentation at the same time there is one more thing called as help you know help will give you the overall documentation and also you know dar right dar will give you the list of attributes if i go for dar of numbers it will give the list of attributes only whereas if i go for help it will give the entire documentation like how it was implemented in the backend in fact the list we are seeing it was implemented like a class in the backend that structure how it is implemented everything it is showing so going further like this so we can see the next attributes the remaining so what are the remaining attributes we have we already seen the dar the dar has a lot of uh, attributes we have seen so let me delete it here uh, let's focus down if i do like a dar of numbers okay i got like sorry numbers means i got some attributes and i don't want to process the things which have underscores on either side which i showed just now so then what 
for each attribute in so and so i'm asking like print of each attribute you see now how things are working so it worked if i can focus on this one we got a lot of attributes and you know all these attributes are like strings right you know generally so when you work and every string has an attribute of like um starts with i am taking like you know if something is starting with an two underscores i don't want it so i am taking for each of the attribute hey is it starting with two underscores you see for most of the time it is same right so whichever it is true that i want to print now you see here how i am writing a logic i am taking this condition and i am doing so based upon this condition i am doing till now i am saying number greater than something number less than something instead of doing like that i am relying on it now did you see i got things which have underscores only so but like i want the reverse right so the condition i want to negate so i write a not now you see i got things which don't have underscores on either side so finally i got these many attributes so so these attributes how do you process so there are some which are helping you to understand about the things some which are helping to you know add the values some which are helping to delete the values let me take these numbers first understand this list it is having some values i want to check the particular values say from these numbers i want to first get the counts if for any number how many times it is occurring Say I am asking eighty-eight. I am asking or like ninety-nine. I am asking. Hey, how many times ninety-nine is occurred? If you see ninety-nine here once occurred, second time and the third time, totally there were three times. That's the reason you got it. Similarly, if I ask for any other character, say like if I am asking for the same ninety-nine like a list, I am asking. Like an individual list means you don't have right. so like a value it has or like if you ask for anything if it is present it will give if i am asking for like 67 does it have 67 no means if it has something it will give if not it will not give right that's what we need to understand and during the you know list so we need to understand one interesting point so if i say my list is equal to 1 1 sorry 1 to uh, say like 1 uh, 2 and again within that we have like 1 2 you see how many times is one is occurring here can someone tell me how many times uh, two is present in this particular things yes anyone how many times two is present here whenever you are checking it will check only at the base level so if you do indexing also this is zeroth value this is first value this entirety is like you know second value so that's the reason when i am asking the value how many times two is present it will say one at one time only i got it that's what it says hope you understood so this is what you need to is more important okay any doubt till now any doubt till now so fine so like this if i go ahead i got the list of these things in the same lines if i go for the other things the other attributes if i say let me take the example of the same list i have uh my list is there in my list i have some values and if i want to add some values observe carefully 
or like let me make the list again simple say like one one two two three three very simple list i'm making and i'm asking hey what is the value of my list it will say now for this list if i want to add the values how do you do my list dot append so this is the most most important asked question if i do like append of 44 you know 44 i am appending so the moment I append, you can see what is the value of my list. Whatever the value I added, it was added at the end, right? Fine. So let me tell you, if I say like a 55. Now 55 I want like, like a list of values, whichever I want. Whichever I added, it will add at the end. If I execute, did you see that 55 is added at the end? In the same fashion, if I go ahead to find that, which are the values I am adding, it will add at the end. So it doesn't matter what data type I do, it will take any data type and it will add. With append, we also can take dot append of multiple values. Means if I have like, you know, 66, 77, 88. I have three values I'm adding. And after that, if I ask, hey, what is the value of my list? Now, did you understand one thing? Append is such a thing that it will append. We can add a single value or multiple values. But what are the values you are appending? It will add to the same dimension at the end. Similarly, there is one more thing called as extend. This extend, if you pass like some value called as 99, it will throw an error. Means extend will not take individual values. It will take a, any of the iterable objects. Iterables means what? Iterables means we can apply for loop on them. The simple examples are strings or a list or a tuple or next you will see set, a dictionary, next range. There are a few other thoughts of it you will see afterwards means it will not take individual elements but it will take like this means same my list dot extend of if you pass a single value also fine but it should be part like this if i do the beauty is like extend will take like an individual element but add to the same dimension or like you take another thing say like i am taking like a list say the 100 100 i am taking within the list so whichever you take so it will take yeah this is very interesting i am not taking like a list but like a string i am taking 100 as i am doing extend it will take each value just imagine like for loop it is going to each other value and adding to the same dimension did you see so so if i do like the append my list dot append of same 101 if i do append observe carefully append even if you will give like a string also it will add to the dimension whichever you way if you give like a list it will add like a list if you give like a string it will add like a string as it is whereas extend will take only iterables but it will loop over each other value and add to the same thing if someone asks you what is the basic difference between and a list and an append this is the most important thing so to conclude our learning we can make a list here both append and extend can add at the end of the list only but like append will take a single element or an iterable it will add as it is at the end whereas extend will take only iterables but adds to the same dimension this is what the basic difference that we should be aware Okay, now we understood, sir. Append is there, extend is there. Both are adding at the end. What if I want to add in the middle? What if I want to add in the center or some other place? So let me take again the list. My list is equal to again, say, small list and take three values. And for this list, if I print, it will say like this. For this list, say, if I want to add at the starting. I do my list dot insert of say at the zeroth position if I want to add. 
So what are the existing values of this thing? 0, 1, 2. At 0th position, say I want to add 44. And after inserting, and if I ask, hey, what is the value of insert? Did you see 44 was added at the starting? And did the 11 or something was removed? No. The existing values were not removed. They were shifted by one position. Similarly, if I go again, if I want to add some other position, say I want to add at second position, some 55 I want to add. Now you see what happened. In these existing values, this is the zeroth value, this is first value, this is second value. So what are the existing second and third values were shifted by one position and this 55 was added here in middle. So not only that, if I want to add at the end, so if I say like, hey, add the value of end. So if I do like minus one, will you do what that? Someone asked this as an interview question. You know, append will add at the end, whereas insert will add at the whichever place you give. If I do minus one, so means the last position. So will it work like, uh, so dike append? No. Whenever you are adding at the last position, the existing value was like push it to the end and doing. If you want to work like an append using insert, we need to give, you know, the length of this existing list, if I pass, and then if I ask like, you know, 77, works like, so, append operation. You see, it will take the length, then it will add. That's how it will add at the end. It is same like, you know, append operation. Okay, this is all about the insert. Similarly, some people will confuse it with the substitution. So, substitution means what? Substitution means you take any value, any position, in the position you want to do. Till now, insert means what? The existing values were not removed, not overwritten, just the position will be shifted by one, right? Whereas if you go for substitution, say like if I go for my list, and if I ask, hey, get me the value of, uh, say, third value, if I'm asking, it will say third value is 22, because zeroth value, first value, second value, third value. This third value, I want to, you know, do something else. So substitution means this. Third value, you want to replace with, say, 22. So, say like 2, 2. 2, 2, if I say, if I want to replace with a 2. Then if I ask, hey, what's the value of my list? Did you see what happened? The existing value was overwritten. So this is the difference between substitution and insert. So substitution will not uh, uh, so change anything. It will just replace the existing value. So this is fine till now. And also one more thing. So you want to see is like, so this my list dot insert, how it is working when you are giving a string. So if I give a string of say Python, it will not do any problem. Same like append it will work. Wherever you want to do at a third position, it will not remove the values, shift the existing values by one position. So that is how it works. Similarly, okay, till now we are thinking about the things of adding. And how about removing the values? For that, there are two operations called as pop and remove. This pop and remove works in a very interesting way. This, you know, the pop every time will remove a value and pop is the only operation. When it is doing also, it will give you the things. If I say like, you know, so my list dot pop. The moment I did a pop, it will give me the value. So if I see, after doing a pop, if I ask the value. So during the pop also, I get the value. And subsequently also, I can see. Means, so let me do like this. So dot pop I'm doing. The operation also give you the value. Which you give value, it will give the last value. So last value is 77, it removed. And in the new list, did you see that the last value is no more? 
And if I repeat the same thing again, you see, if I do the same again, again, it will do the last value, which is 33. It will remove and it will give the remaining list without it. And if I do like again, the same thing, it will remove the last value and gives the things without it. So pop by default removes the values at the last. So, so by default, last index position value will be removed. Whereas for the same pop, if you can also give the positions, if I give a position, then it will remove the value at the position. So in this particular value, see here, this is zeroth value, first value, second value, third value, fourth value. Say if I give three right now, so it will go exactly to the third position and remove it. So what are is in the third position Python, it will remove and you got the remaining list. Similarly, if I ask, uh, you know, hey, give me, remove the, you know, second position. So now, so removes second, second index position value. Which are is the second index? This is a zeroth value. This is the first value. This is the second value. So it will remove the second value and you get it. So what if a particular position which we gave is not present? Say like, now we have like zero, one, two. And what if I give my list dot pop of the some fifth position I'm asking. If I ask the fifth position, you don't have a value, right? It will throw an error. Or else, if the list is entirely empty and if you ask just pop also, it will throw in. Means if you don't have a value, it will throw an error. Or if you give a position which is not present also, it will throw an error. So this is how by position we are doing. Whereas if you want to remove by a specific element, so then we need to go for something called as a remove. See, in this particular list, if I have some elements, what is this my list right now? It has like three elements, 44, 11, and two. If I want to remove the element, say 11, I do remove of 11. If the element is present, it will remove. I told that pop is the only operation. When it is doing, it will give the result. Others will not give any result. That's why if I print also, it will be none. Everyone, you, you see the effect after it. You see that, you know, 11 was removed again. And okay, just now you removed 11. So if I ask to remove 11 again, so what would be the issue? If I ask again, as the value is no more, it will throw error. Sir, what if uh, there were like multiple values? So it will remove the first occurrence. If there are like multiple occurrences of 11, say 11, 11, 11, 11, 11. 11 all like this. And if I ask that my list dot remove of 11. And after that, if I ask, hey, what is the value of my 11? The first occurrence is removed. First is removed. This is how it works. So multiple occurrences also, it will remove like this. So this is all about you understood, right? And there is one powerful operator called as a del which is also designed for removing the elements only. So uh, Dell is so powerful that if you give any list, it will remove the element in that particular thing. If you see in this list, if I ask for like any position, it will remove. Of course, this is something clumsy. Let me create one more list. So this time I'm saying my list is equal to A, B, C, D, F, so and so. If I do the index, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So, you know, in fact, this is also one kind of removing elements by position only. So Dell, how it works is first you do index. If you can index something, we can remove it. We can slice something, we can remove it. Sir, we can do the things uh, same with a, this also, like a pop also, here also we can do. If I go for like third element, what are the third element? D. This third element, I can remove it. How do I remove? Which are the value I found? If I do del of three, then it will remove that element. It's not like when doing operation, it will not return anything. 
After that, if I ask, did you see that the D is no more? So not that. You know, Dell can also do one more interesting thing. If I say like my list, I can do a slice, right? Say from first position till the you know fifth position, I want to go. So with a step of two, means every alternative number. Now, did you see? It's a very interesting thing. It's not like continuous values. I am removing B and I am removing E. So in these positions. So like this, if you can slice something, you can delete that also. If I apply del operation, it will delete it. And after that, if I ask, hey, what is the value of my list? Did you see? Those two values were removed. Not only two or 30, if you have a big list also, if you can do a slice, we can remove it. So Dell is so powerful that if you can index something, you can slice something, we can delete that. Not only these things at the worst thing, before even doing that, let me tell you one interesting thing. You list has some values. If I do dot clear for a list, clear means like whenever you're in a for loop, say sometimes during for loop, you want to get all the values you want to use. And again, if it goes to the starting of the for loop, everything should be clear. So what it actually does is that it will not remove the list. The list will be there, but it will be empty. So if you just want to empty a list, if it has some values, we can do it. It will not change the original object, address, location, anything. So only the values will be clean. And if you want to delete the entire object, use Dell operator. Dell is so powerful that if you delete something, after that, if you ask, hey, what is that? You get nothing. So like this. So we understood now. So like this. After this list. So we are, we understood like a Dell operation is very powerful. We can delete anything and fine. The last operation which I want to tell is about sorting. For sorting, there are two things. Sort, so list dot sort is one way versus sorted is a built-in function. Function. There are two ways in which you can do sorting. So how to do this thing? If I take a small list, say of alphanumerics, and uh, if I want to work on it. So let me take a small good example. Uh, my list, so why every time my list, some list, anything we can take. You know, my list I take because it's easy to do. So if you see here, let me take some numbers. Uh, if I take like one and a nine, um, and like, you know, uh, same one as a string and uh, nine as a string and if I say like you know a z capital A capital Z so we have like this so I have like the values numbers and like numbers as a strings and the small letters and after capital letters like that because Python works with all these things so let me try doing with the sorting right now. If I do like a my list right now, I got the values. For there is a sorted built-in function. If I pass to that, if I ask my list, did you see what happened right now? Earlier in Python 2, if you have like different data types also, it will work sorted. So it is sorting the entire values and it is giving us. Now, what is the problem here? If you have one of them as integer, I cannot work because I cannot do operations between integers and a string. So if all are integers, all are strings, I can do. So if different things are there, I cannot do it the same. Okay. So similarly, if I do like a you know my list dot sort also, same problem will come. So because in Python 3, they changed it. So what else we can do? Let me take the same list right now and I remove the integers. Which one is having a problem? The integers. I am removing it. So now, if I do again the list, I got the values. And if I do sorted of, 
this list my list now did you see what happened so you got the values so e to z so whenever so numbers as a strings will be the smallest followed by this thing basically when you are doing a sorting we need to understand that they will do in ascending order by default so the minimum is numbers as a the string is the minimum then lower alphabets then capital alphabets why they are getting like this ascending so based on ascii values so if you want ascii values we have like chr and or direct chr and uh, or d functions you can try that you will understand and you know the sorted built in function so is sorting by default like this and apart from that we can also give an option called as reverse equal to true if i do reverse equal to true it will do the same sorting in a reverse direction so fine uh, and if you see here uh, think like um, yeah so sorted if you sorted like you you got the values in a reverse order that's fine now after sorting if i ask hey what is your my list did you see that the original list is not changed of course you gave the order itself in this way but if you give in any other order say like initial order if i change to something like this also so i get small alphabets numbers like this you see again i'm processing this numbers so did you see so it is doing so this sorted and function by default will do in ascending order if i do reverse equal to true the same values will get in the reverse and after that if you ask the original list did you see the original list is not changed this sorted every time will create a new object so new object is created so this is what we need to be aware of sorted built in function whereas if you want changes to be done in place we have something called as list dot sort so in place changes happen means after this, this operation nothing will come but after that we again we need to print now what are the changes which were done will be on the same object in the same fashion if i do like my list dot sort i can give a reverse equal to say true then after that if i ask hey what is the value of my list did you see the same values which were sorted so this is all about it works now this is the sorting not only this if i give a numbers or anything it will work i have taken one example like you but we, if you want to do some kind of customizations we can also do further say like i have some names names like you know say ramesh say suresh say ganesh say mahesh so these are like you know common things right we have and these names if i want to sort so if i do like a sort built in function of the same name i get it but after that if you ask the original names it will be as it is and if you want the changes to be in place dot sort if i do so the changes will be in place if i do so this is how i get and for the same name if i want to sort i can also give like you know reverse equal to true if i do reverse equal to true and i ask did you see in terms of alphabets it is doing a reverse order and also not only this if i want to do based upon the string length so which are is having less length or higher length if you want to do so for that i can give like a custom thing called as key as it is a string i want to do like string dot you know so maybe something string dot count or so string dot length or anything if i do like any custom operations i can do so means like what operations you want to do we should say so uh, so the length of string if i want to do based upon length if i want to do so means like now basically all were same so if i give like you know some names is equal to this time so cat you know dog so if i say like you know uh, ball 
um, something. So, and uh, so like this, I have taken some random length. And if I want to do sorting, you know, this concept is same. If you do sorted built in function, changes will be not happening in place. So, if I say like reverse equal to true, and if I say key is equal to length, length is a common thing we know. So, if I do in the reverse order, based upon the length, less length first and the highest length last. So, like that, things will go on. So, uh, 